Amen? Amen. Uh, our boys are going to the conference. Okay, so youth department will come up with what, $250? Is that all right? That's, right. That's from the youth department. Amen? Amen. Amen. Take care. Amen. Amen. I want to thank uh, everyone that went and supported the, uh, the Mines and the Youth Department down at Mount Perrin. Uh, that week I had full-blown flu, and uh, the doctor told me, go home and get in the bed. That there was no medication for the flu, but we could treat the symptoms. And at that time, my temperature was 104. And I could barely stand on my feet. But thanks be to the good Lord. Amen. 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 I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. But everything that's been done this morning has sort of walked all over top of my sermon. I, 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 mean, I, mean, I mean, you know, nevertheless, I'm here. Amen. 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 I want to thank the, the Lord for all that he has done for me. I want to thank uh, my daughters for representing last night. Amen. 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 And I want to thank uh, Taste the Spirit for representing. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, uh, we talk big here at First Baptist. Amen. But we serve a big God. That's right. And we serve him big. Amen? Amen. 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 It does my heart good, uh, London, to know you're a freshman and that you got support. Because yeah. that's mother and grandmother and grandfather. Well, when he's here, that's what I am. Amen? Amen. Know this, Sunday. Know this. Amen. Amen. Ask any of the young people here. Amen. And the parents don't come to me and go, Sister William shouldn't have said that to my child. Because when they walk through those doors, they belong to me. Amen. Because I, I can tell what you brought them up on. And they're going to keep it while they on this end. Amen. 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 As you pass, I had to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I had to keep it real. Amen? Amen. And Michael, I got one just like you at home. Amen? Amen. We got a Michael too. Amen. He just got back from New York where he auditioned for The Voice. Okay? A uh, week before that, he was in Las Vegas opening for Tim Allen, the Santa Claus. Amen. I, I didn't even know the Santa Claus had to have an opening. You know, I thought it had elves and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Amen, amen, amen. But to all, and, and to my deacons, amen, to my deacons, I heard you were representing well. And one thing I want to I wanna put out there is that when we go out in the community, when we go out in the community, whether it be the young ones or the not so young ones, amen, we should always acknowledge our pastor. Amen. Always. Amen. I might not be here, but I know. Amen. amen. Acknowledge your pastor when you go somewhere. Amen. Because if anything go down, you're going to run to the pastor anyway. Can you help me this or can you do this? Can you? you know it. Amen? So to all of us, acknowledge your pastor. Amen? Amen. All right. They got all of this out the way. Okay? You know, I, I believe in getting up here, doing what I got to do, and getting out of here. Amen? Amen. Now. Pay close attention to this message this morning because you've already preached it. Everything that was done this morning confirmed this message. Everything. We're going to emphasize verse chapter 5 
in verse 5, and number, the word nevertheless. Nevertheless. Everybody understand? Nevertheless. Okay. Nevertheless, the subject for today is nevertheless, I remember the day. Now, I could go and say, nevertheless, I remember the day when Sony was out here partying hard. Amen? But that's not what he's talking about this morning. He said, nevertheless, I remember the day. The day I accepted Christ. How do you know you accepted Christ? Has anything changed? Are you still doing the same things you were doing back then? Amen. amen. Come on. The quicker you say amen, the quicker I'll leave. Amen. amen. Uh, uh oh, that was a loud amen. <laughs> All right. We're taking this from Luke 5, 1 through 5, and the word nevertheless. Our subject today is nevertheless, I remember the day. But before I start that, I want to give greetings to the one who keeps me daily, provides for my every need, who watches over me late in my midnight hour, to my one and only true love, who has been working on our relationship since February 16, 1989, our Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank him for this opportunity and to my boo, I mean, your pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The man I had been with for 49 years. Oh. Hitting 50. To the pastor of this great church and to my other half, I thank you for the opportunity. Amen. 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 <laughs> to my sisters, and my brothers, to the saints and to the ants, I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Because everything that I have said, I was or could be just like you. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to talk to Jesus for just a minute because I talked to him earlier. Father God, there is someone out here who this word is for. You know, you and I talked this morning, Lord, I'm coming up that road, and, and Lord, I just, I just want you to do what you do best. I've been thanking everybody, Lord, because I've been waiting on your Holy Spirit to come on in. It's just me and you, Lord, and I'll give the word just like you gave it to me. In the precious name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, the definition of nevertheless means in spite of the facts. Amen. Amen. It could be replaced with however. And for the high tech Facebook gurus, it could be NTL. Okay, let me do it again. Nevertheless can be replaced with however. And to the gurus of Facebook, it could be NTL. Did y'all get that? See, y'all supposed to acknowledge that I know how to do this thing. You use nevertheless to add surprising information or something in contrast to what was already said or written. This was a day of confrontation. The Lord came to us. The Lord called us. It was a day of invitation, personally extended, graciously expressed, seriously explained, and joyfully embraced. Remember, I remember the day. Amen? Amen. Do you remember the day? How many remember the day? Raise your hand. Do you remember when you were saved? Not just because somebody told you, but you were saved. Do you remember the day? Amen. 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 All right. It was a day of salvation. The direction and the destiny of your life 
began a life-changing experience for you on that day. Yeah. I recently celebrated two birthdays. Yes, I had another birthday since I saw you. Amen. You see, I was born on the 25th of January, 1947, physically. And then I was born again, February 16, 1989. Amen. <laughs> Nevertheless, I celebrated my physical birth on the 25th of January. However, I celebrated my spiritual birth on the 16th of February. On January 25th, I was born into the Allen family. Mm, it's right. <laughs> and on February 16th, I was born again into God's family. I must confess that I don't remember much about January 25th. Amen. Too many years have passed. But I do remember much about February 16th, 1989. That is one day I remember very well. Amen? Yeah. Do you remember your day? Yeah. Sort of like, you remember that day sort of like the Israelites, when Israel had the Passover. And we remember it right today. And it was hundreds of years ago. This was a theme for my new life, an incessant fountain of gratefulness. Even so is the time which we now tell the never-to-be-forgotten story of how we became sinful freedom from guilt, a sinful freedom. Somebody had to pay for it. You had to pay for it. Now, if you just stop and think a minute, who paid it? Who paid for that? Do you ever really stop and think of how much it cost for you to be saved? And then some days we fall so short. Amen? Amen. London, can I preach to you this morning? Amen. <laughs> a theme for my new life and... This is another way that we can show exactly what this day meant to us. Have you ever seen a coin and it's been used over and over again so that it's the, the superscription is, is rubbing off on it? Have you ever seen that? Yes. Have you ever seen that? Yes. Nevertheless, yes. nevertheless, this day remains, even though we rubbed off the corn, the inscription, everything else. We might forget who our friends were. We might uh, go out here and, and do everything we bad enough to do after that day. But nevertheless, you remember that day. You remember where you were, who was there, what you did. Amen? You remember that day. Sort of like 9-11. You remember what you were doing on 9-11. You know if you was in school, at your house, with your family, and you also know about that terrible day that we were attacked here in the United States of America. You wanted to know, where's my family? Where is everybody? You had to know that. That's the way the day you were saved should be. Burnt in your brain. Burnt in your heart. A day you could tell over and over again. I was, I was at Red Team Chapel. Fort Hood, Texas. Me and the Sergeant Major's wife was making fun of everybody that walked in the door. Look at her. She got a run in the back of her stocking. She don't need that hat on. That dress is too short for that old woman. This is what we were doing. And the Lord came. I don't even remember this happening. When I came to myself, I was behind the altar, right at the foot of the cross, mascara going everywhere. Because, you know, I think I was fine then. I was 100 pounds thinner then. You know what I'm saying? 
man, my slip was coming off of me, right? And then there was this white preacher right there. No offense taken back there, okay? But, so I, um, what's his name? It's Colonel Sanford. He was sitting there looking at me like, what in the world is wrong with this woman? And the service started at 11 o'clock, and I think it was 6 o'clock in the evening. And I was still on my knees at that chapel. Amen? Amen. You never forget that time. Never. The memory will drop from the handful of mementos that you have in your life, which you now cherish. It will stay right there with you. Amen? Amen? But even when we go to our grave, even when we go to our grave, we will remember that day. Can I get an amen? amen? Cheryl, you remember that day? I mean, do you remember, girl? <coughs> now, I know you remember Pastor and, and being up around that piano when he was playing in a band. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Because I was right there to make sure she didn't get close. Amen? <laughs> I have to keep it real. <laughs> Wasn't that boo? <laughs> I have to keep this real so you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> and since this is Black History Month, and we celebrate it, let me say it like this. The slaves were emancipated. They were galley slaves. They may forget the day which they heard their chains, and they call it fudders. When the chains are rattling, they call them fudders. When they were rattling on the ground. But they will never ever forget when they got the freedom from being in bondage. They will never forget that. And we should never forget it. Amen? Amen. Because when we don't have Christ in our life, we are in bondage. Amen. You know that, right? Amen. That's right. We know that the slaves were in bondage. Yes, they were. And we also know that the pardoned felon may fail to remember their release day when they were finally set free. We also know that a soldier may forget what they learned in basic training just to survive as a soldier. But they'll never forget the day they were saved. Never. They will never forget. But oh, the hour of forgiven sin, the moment of perfect pardon, our souls shall never forget while we are alive or being human. The sun has risen every morning, but on that eventful day, God had the light of seven days. Everything was different that day. Remember when you were saved? <coughs> Everything was different. The grass seemed to be greener. The trees seemed to be taller, reaching up to heaven. The wind was cool on our face, and it was gentle, like it caressed our face. Amen? Amen. The rain fell from, with moisture that only comes from heaven. The sky was wonderfully blue, and the flowers had beautiful colors in them, colors like we had never seen before. Amen? I asked you, how can we ever forget the day that God saved us? Think about it. Take a minute and think about that day. Where were you? What did you do? Where were you? Amen? Where were you when you got saved? Were you at the mall talking to somebody that was witnessing to you? Jordan, where were you when you got saved? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't say it. Where were you when you got saved? I bet you know when turmoil hit your life, you know where you were. Amen? You know when 
The doctor gave you a bad diagnosis. You know right where you were. And you picked that phone up. And you said, it's going to be all right. Amen? Where were you? You was in trouble. But you know God saved you. You know. You know he saved you. And mother, when it was time for Jordan to come to college, and he had to leave home. Been there three times, I know. Amen. And your heart said, I got to go check his car. I got to go check on Jordan. I got to go take him this. And this will go on for a couple of months. You're not by yourself. I mean, we all been to that club. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but don't worry, we are never going to let Jordan be hungry. His clothes ain't going to be dirty. Amen. We're going to take care of him. That you can take to the bank. Okay? Grandma, we can't cook like him. Jordan gonna want to eat when he come home. Amen? Grandma's food. Amen? But he won't be home. He won't be home. Amen? Do you really remember when you got saved? Or better yet, are you sure you're saved? Because an emotional experience does not make you saved. Amen? Amen? It's not an emotional experience. It's when you know that you know that you know you have accepted Jesus in your life. Amen. You know, God can do a lot of things. I think it was my birthday, 25th of January birthday. And I said, we need to get somebody over on that piano and get pastor back in that pulpit. Amen? Amen. But then regardless of who I talked to, nobody knew a piano player. Amen? Amen. But you hear. Right. Jordan, you hear. Right. Amen? Amen. And let me tell you, when we first got here, there was a, a set of blue drums. Come here. Come here. These blue drums, I think they're downstairs. Yes, ma'am. Y'all have to excuse my sniffling, but the flu trying to, you know. The drums that were sitting there, he could play. That's how little they were. <laughs> and they had a six foot guy playing it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, what do you do? Do you walk around, talk about, you know, First Baptist? I'm here at First Baptist, but they need some drum. And I tell you, they need to either get a smaller drummer or bigger drums. Amen. <laughs> but I didn't go talking about it to everybody. We need this and we need that. And, and how come they don't do this? And how come they don't do that? And I didn't call me. Oh, man. I told the musician that's back there, come on, come up here, baby. I told him, I said, I don't know the first thing is about drums. Nothing, except for if they're good or if they're not good. And I said, meet me at the music store. Right? And I said, pick out a set of drums. And then I got the other musician. Because I didn't know what to do. You know, I'm, I'm one of these people that I'm very limited. Uh, <clears throat> I'm challenged in a lot of ways. But what I do is I put people around me that are not just yes people. That teaches me. Amen? Because I can depend on them to be honest. So we met out to the music store. Amen? Go back to the camera. <laughs> and this wonderful man here, I wrote a check on his bank account. You sure did? Paid for those drugs. You sure did. Bible study night. They were Am set I telling the truth? Yes, ma'am. We set them up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And we got the covers for them. Yes, ma'am. And we got all the drum things. Pick it up. 
Joy, you know that, you know, and hold up. All the things that go with it. London. London. What did I say? Jordan. That's a Jordan coming. That's a Jordan coming. I just went to the head now. We picked those drums up, and there was a Wednesday night Bible study. And I said, I need to see the trustees. And I hand them all the paperwork, all the warranty and everything. They said, well, what are we supposed to do with this? Well, I don't know. I'm not a trustee. But I know I'm supposed to give it to the trustees. Amen? Yep. Amen? Yes, ma'am. I said, that set of drums is from Reverend Williams and I. Yeah. Now, God has blessed us to have a music room at our house. Yes, you see that set of drums? You see that set of drums? Same set of drums. Is that one burden way? But I didn't have to pay, but what did I pay for that? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> I think it's like two hundred or three hundred dollars. Somebody called me and said, Miss Williams, I went to your church before, and this place has a set of drums and they only want two or three hundred dollars. That set of drums you saw last night was in my music room. Amen? Amen. Now, here's the clincher. I'm going to learn how to play the piano. Right. Nevertheless, the facts are I got a set of drums for the church. I got a set of drums for the house. These are the facts. Can't play a lick. I got a baby grand piano for the house. Can't play a lick, but I got the book now. Amen? Amen. Nevertheless, don't look at the facts. All right. Come on. Don't look at the facts. Now, I heard that voice. Who's that voice? There's that voice. He said, yeah, come on. When you go in the courtroom, you look at the facts, right? Amen. But when I go in the courtroom, I turn to him, who is my resource. He, he is my resource. And he will be the one that delivers. Because you see, I remember the day. I remember the day when he saved me. Not you. I don't know what your day is. But he saved me. You know why I live the tithes? Live the tithes because that's my connection to him. That's a supernatural, supernatural connection. I don't care what else happens, I will tie. Amen. Because I don't want to lose that connection with him. Amen. We have been together since 1989, even though I knew of Christ before then. But I did not know him. And then when I accepted him and the Great Commission, man, I was deadly then. Deadly. Went to school, learned everything I could. <laughs> but the most important thing that I remember is the day I got saved. The day I got saved, I wouldn't trade it for nothing or nobody. I've had to walk away from people that I truly love. But I have to go with him because I love him more than anything. Amen. You hear me? He's going to stick by me. He's going to give me everything I need. He is the one that will keep you when you can't even keep yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. You've got to know that. If I don't leave nothing else with you today, know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The day he put your name in his book of life, you became something new. Amen? I don't care what kind of job you got now. Guess what? That job ain't nothing if you don't have Jesus. Your bank account ain't nothing if you ain't got Jesus. Your family ain't nothing unless they got Jesus. Amen? But you can't stop you if you got it. You can't stop you. Anything that you desire, God will give you your desires. Anything. Anything. He will make you the, the giver, 
not the lender. Amen. You don't have to be a lender or borrower anymore. You don't have to be a borrower. You don't have to borrow nothing. Not nothing. But you got to line up with that cross. You got to line up the physical and the spiritual. If it lines up, he won't withhold nothing from you. Nothing. There are things that have happened to me in my life, and I know I didn't have sense enough to do it. But God is the one. He really, he really is the one. So this morning, if I don't leave anything else with you, check yourself out. There's a reason why there's so much sickness in the land. There's a reason why so many of our children are dying. There is a reason. There is a reason for it. You better check yourself out. Check yourself out. Now, if I was going to, if I was really going to close this out the way I wanted to, it'd be different. But I'm closing this out asking for special prayer. A friend of mine, some of you might know her, Ocelia Lewis. Sister Ocelia Lewis from Macedonia Baptist Church. She's one of the ministers. Always dressed fine. She got three girls. Ocelia Lewis, Trusty Lewis's wife talked to her Saturday. That was one of the reasons I didn't go. Has been diagnosed with cancer of the heart and the brain. But I was a living witness that it can be cured. Okay? It can be cured. And she is in very good spirits. We talked the longest time on the phone. But some of the things that, that we talked about, you know, I needed to be just me and her. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I didn't accompany y'all on Saturday. I needed to have the house to myself to talk with her. So when you don't see me, don't always say, oh, this is me. I'm cutting out. No, I'm not cutting out. I'm not cutting out. I'm not cutting out. I'm not cutting out. I'm either sick. I'll feel like I'm dying. Amen? But Ocelia, I've known her for 15 years. And when I met her, and she tells this story everywhere she goes, she couldn't read. She was a grown woman and could not read. And I just felt as though nobody should be so that they can't read. Especially an adult, and, and you could tell the anointing of the Lord was on her. And so Pastor and I got tapes, and we took time. And she can read better than I can now. And she tells that story wherever she goes. But she seems to, she's weak right now. She's undergoing chemo. Sister Coleman's another one down in that area that has had cancer. She lost her hair and she was so down. And I told you, her gonna look better than mine when it come back. She called me, sir. Girl, you gotta come down here. I got the curliest bunch of her and it looks so good. <laughs> but see, you gotta, you gotta find something good and positive when bad times hit. You, you got to do that because your mental attitude will take you further than medicine. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It will take you further. Yeah. <coughs> the doors of the church, I'm going to open those. But I wanted to share that with my elders yeah. here and all that know the word of prayer. We're going to open the doors of the church. <coughs>